There will never be one ultimate system solution, no ultimate technology. We need to cater to a variety of different scenarios. We need to find smarter ways of producing electricity at a competitive cost and in a sustainable way with like, you know, smaller projects, multiple of them scattered around the country. Nordic Energy Research travelled through the Nordics, talking to thought leaders and exploring the potential of decentralised and isolated energy systems. We need to cooperate on Nordic solutions to global challenges. The first and foremost people want is light. Modern energy in, in a family household has extremely high value, basically from a human development perspective. Connected to this technological development, you have these enabling solutions like uh, digitalization, you have mobile money, pay as you go systems, which has basically enabled the whole solar home system business model that we have today. Often forgotten in the SDG 7, very focused on household connections, that important uh, aspect of public services. So typically, those with access in villages will be not the poorest, but through public services, you can reach um, everybody at the same time. What questions do we need to ask? You know, maybe equality and, and you know, inclusion should be part of that first question. And then how can we make technology and markets work for that purpose? That would be ideal. You get all this technology development. You get high volume, low cost solar. And this has basically dramatically lowered the cost for electricity in a rural household. If you now in five to 10 years get the batteries down to the low cost level, you will have a very cost effective and reliable solution in off-grid areas. A very important next step is to solve this uh, clean cooking problem. I think that is perhaps the biggest sort of uh, human development next step that uh, we can take. There are many obvious pros with solar energy and one is that you can have very many small power plants instead of a few very large ones. So you want it on the rooftops, you want the facade, integrated uh, uh, PVs, and you want the large parks. And we have to try different ways of solar energy. We have to try floating. We have to try, you know, building integrated systems and semi-integrated systems and all kinds of different batteries. And we have to find good ways to get more solar power. A lot of the solar technology leaders in Europe and US are now in battery development, basically because it's the last bottleneck to a very good role for solar in supplying electricity globally. I think most analysts today all agree that solar is going to be the most important pillar among the renewables. And uh, I think floating solar will play a crucial role to achieve this uh, expansion. You have many places where power or energy is extremely expensive. In the archipelagos where you have to uh, ship diesel and that then they end up having very expensive energy from the diesel generators. Prevention of evaporation that you can obtain with floating solar is also valid not only for the hydroelectric power dams, but also for water, irrigation, reservoirs or drinking water sources. In 2014, CEV announced its so-called green vision, uh, becoming 100% green by 2030, based on local uh, green resources. Our um, emissions of carbon dioxide per inhabitant is one of the largest in the world. We are changing from use of heavy fuel all around the society to get rid of it and use renewable energy everywhere. We can do it because we have a lot of renewable resources here in Faroe Islands. Introducing uh, renewable energy uh, normally introduce uh, some stability issues because there is some intermittency in the renewable resources uh, in general. It is a challenge to uh, maintain the stability in the system when um, you cannot rely on other power systems and you have to be self-sufficient. Maybe half of the production can come from wind. And the challenge there is to take the wind energy into the system because the wind energy is very fluctuating. And when there's a lot of wind and it's the middle of the night, we still have to curtail the wind energy because we have not enough users for it. We have a lot of wind and a lot of rain 
but in the summer months it tends to lack uh, both resources and that's actually when we have uh, the solar resources in place. So in order to again lower the need of reservoirs or storage, we have to introduce uh, solar energy as well. A question that is uh, occupying the Faroese, the people of Faroe Islands all the time. If you talk about wind energy, they say, why don't you use the ocean? Use the tidal currents that are really heavy around the islands. Maybe the most interesting resource uh, is the tidal energy. The new technology, like a dragon uh, flying in the sea instead of in the air. This is basically lunar energy. So as long as the moon stays in its path, uh, orbiting Earth, we will be able to predict for 10,000s of years ahead when we will be able to produce. The nature of this natural resource that it's so highly predictable and so rich of energy in its energy density. So it makes a really good complementary source of renewable energy to solar and wind. We think that what we're doing, it brings to islands that are often dependent on fossils, tough conditions for wind and solar, lack of land. We can meet the existing high costs much more easily, also with smaller scale installations. It can really make a difference in Faroe Islands. Then we can have maybe half of the electricity production or more from uh, tidal. We have two main components uh, to be added to the system. It's batteries and synchronous condensers. Batteries for supporting the grid frequency and to ensure the security of supply. Wind, hydro, tidal and sun. That is the main four uh, resources that we will build our system on up until 2030. You can do so much with geothermal in all different temperatures, everything from high temperatures into to low temperatures. What geothermal does is not only produce electricity, but also produces heat. We're basically drilling for hot water. Well, Vamorka is developing and operating small-scale geothermal power plants in close cooperation with the local communities here in Iceland. This temperature is scalable worldwide. Many, many countries on Earth have this temperature at like a couple of kilometers depth. We strive to decentralize power generation and distribution. We can generate power where it's needed. You know, the technology is out there and with, you know, more and more geothermal eventually coming to place, we will lower cost in drilling, we will lower cost in the installation of, of, of power plants, increase the know-how and, and sharing of technology. At some places you will not have sun all the time, and some places you will not have wind all the time, and all places are not suitable for your thermal electricity production. But you know, the combination of, of all of these technologies that we have, and also the new ones coming, we can actually be, play an important part in creating this resilient society. I don't believe that hydrogen is the future, I believe it's the present. We are working with, with hydrogen in new uh, solutions, or in new settings. The Living Lab is very important because we bring reality, how things actually work out there. It's a very modern house where you can have your electricity and your heat and your electric uh, mobility catered for by the local sun. What decentralised bring is added security so that you can add to the, the current infrastructure and in some instances where there isn't any infrastructure, you may add smaller solutions. We also utilise green hydrogen for long-term storage. If you have one system, a huge system, it's very vulnerable. If you add a number of different nodes to that, you add security. The best thing about renewable energy is that, unlike fossil fuels, that uh, is just so unevenly distributed that we have just some uh, countries that have all the resource and then the power of that resource. All countries can make uh, their energy on renewable, and, but it's different. We have geothermal and also hydropower, where others have sun or wind or whatever, but there's no country that has no renewable energy. You just have to go for it with what you have. It's not one technology or you know one project that will solve all of this. It's all of them together, and we have to work and collaborate in order to make that happen. We can take learnings from other islander systems because we share the same challenges when it comes to energy systems.